up in the X. Hello, great ones. Welcome back to another Carpenter example. Here we're going to simulate a system consisting of a small part of a circuit board containing a power transistor and a couple pathways connected to the transistor. The reason why we are going to conduct this simulation is to estimate the operating temperature of the transistor, which can be substantially higher than room temperature due to undesired electric heating. We know transistors are semiconductor devices used to switch or amplify electronic signals. While it's often important to construct a way to cool electronic systems, we know each system has its own acceptable operating temperature range. There is a convectional temperature range, which is set to be between minus 55 degrees Celsius and 125 degrees Celsius. So let's jump over to COMSOL Multiphysics and conduct this experiment. Let us begin by navigating to the model wizard. 3D. Let's navigate down to heat transfer and expand electromagnetic heating and select joule heating. Add. Let's now go to study and under general studies select stationary click and done. Now let's insert our geometry. So navigate to the geometry toolbar, insert sequence, and this will take us to where we have our geometry saved. So select the geometry, open, then click on build all. Here is our geometry. I'm going to take our the grid and also change it to wireframe rendering. Let us insert our parameters. So under global definitions, you can click on parameters. And here where it says load from file, let's select that. And let's change this to Microsoft Excel workbook. Parameters. Open. Leave as default and click load. And here is our global parameter. Let's tidy up our model builder a bit. So let's close geometry and also we can close global definitions. Let's navigate to add materials, make sure that you are home materials built in and let's add copper also FR4 socket board as well as silica glass and also solder 60SN-40 PB and add the components Let's click on Add Material to close the window. Select Copper. Clear Selection. Go to Selection List and select 2 to 4 and also 9 to 12. Add those. Go back to the Model Builder. Select FR4. You can just click this one because that is domain one. Okay, and then select silica glass. Go to selection list, select it, add model builder, and select solder and selection list and domain five to seven. Add 
back to your model builder for the value of the relative permittivity let's key in one and let's select electric currents and for the electric currents let's clear the domains and let's go to selection and let's select two to seven and nine to eleven add those go back to the model builder right click on electric currents select ground and for the ground let's go to selection list let's scroll down to our boundaries so boundary 84 boundary 104 and boundary 124 click add go back to the model builder right click on electric currents and let's select normal current density selection list go up let's select 10 let's add that go back to the model builder and for the normal current density let's key in this equation Okay, now let's right click on current, normal current density, duplicate. Okay, make sure this one is selected. Let's clear this window, selection, and uh, let's add boundary 5 for the builder. Let's duplicate. Before we duplicate that, let's change the normal current density for this one and now let's duplicate again okay so make sure the third normal current density is selected clear selection let's select 15 add model builder and let's change the, the normal current density okay Let's key in this value and let's double check. So now our current density one. So if you zoom in here, this is our equation for this one. Also two here, our equation, and three here and our equation. So that looks good. Now let's minimize this, select the transparent solids, let's walk from the physics toolbar, boundaries, and let's go to heat transparent solid, let's select heat flux for our heat flux, for the boundary selection, let's select all boundaries convective heat flux let's select that let's expand this for the heat transfer coefficient let's enter a value remember this is the name of our variable from our parameters this one so once you enter this here it will take all of the properties here okay let's navigate back to physics boundary heat sources boundary heat source select that one for our boundary selection let's choose transistor chip okay and let's enter this variable Let's go back to our default view and now let's click on mesh and where we have 
physics control mesh, element size. Let's change the element size to finer and build all. Now that our mesh is finally computed, let's navigate to home and let's compute. Let's now expand the electric potential that's in our results. So before we do that, we can close some of these things. So we, we will now focus on the results. So expand electric potential and right click on multi slice. We don't need that. So let's delete that. Yes. Okay. Now where we have electric potential, let's choose surface. With that done, let's just hit plot. This gives us a much cleaner plot of the electric potential. Now let's select temperature and in the temperature toolbar, let's select our surface. Let's go to expression, select replace expression. Let's navigate down to heat transfer in solids and let's select domain fluxes, domain fluxes and let's select this one, total heat flux double click on it actually and uh, let's navigate down to arrow position so our positioning let's change this to 5000 okay and for the color of the arrows so we should have some color options here color we have it as red, let's change it to black or anything of your choice that would show up on this surface. And let's hit plot. And now if we zoom in, we can see our temperature distribution. Let's navigate to our home toolbar. And where we have our plot group, let's select 1D plot group. Let's call it temperature along copper roots. Let's navigate down and where we have legend position, let's choose lower right. That should be okay. And in the temperature along copper roots toolbar, let's select line graph. And for the selection here let's go to selection list and let's select 28 let's scroll down a bit so 28 41 use control 41 50 59 and also 65 add those and let's go to the replace expression Y axis data replace expression and let's choose heat transfer in solids temperature let's expand that and let's select temperature K or double click on it okay and let's scroll down let's Expe expand legends picture legends change it to manual and let's key in here base okay and let's hit plot let's go back to our model builder and let's right click on line graph one 
duplicate for the selection let's turn this on let's clear that selection list and let's select 14 38 just control 38 47 56 and also 62 add those go back to the model builder let's go down to legends and let's change this to collector now let's just hit plot here okay these if we zoom here so let's use a zoom box these two colors are a little bit too close for my liking so let's expand coloring and style and let's change the color from cycle to something that will pop more maybe red plot and now we can go back to our default view so let's go to temperature along copper roots and uh, let's scroll up let's select x access label and let's call it distance from connector and for the title type let's change that to none also let's key in our measurement value so that's meters but this plot shows the temperature along the copper roots connected to the base and the collector we can see that they are almost identical the fact that the joule heating effect does not increase temperature in the copper roots leads to the conclusion that the higher temperature in these roots is due to copper's high conductivity this concludes our simulation thank you for watching bye for now